Welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated Podcast. This is THI publisher Andrew Jones, along with our very own Dina King, who specializes in football recruiting and doing lots of -of jack-of-all-trade stuff behind the scenes. We are venturing into a new world, Dina. We are doing Zoomcasts. I have no idea what people are calling this yet because it's exploded over the last month with all the social distancing, but we're going to keep calling it podcasts for now. And we're going to do a lot more things on this moving forward instead of the traditional podcast. There's no reason not to. We'll be weaving in lots of images as well. The great Jacob Turner and Kevin Roy will will add their expertise and craft to things that we're doing moving forward. But the first podcast topic we wanted to hit on, Dina, is uh, football recruiting. Before we do that real quickly, Uh, How do you like Zoom? And you have a really cool rivals backdrop there. I like that. Um, I have, I sometimes have a THI uh, uh, poster, but it's a banner that I use in a lot of the videos I shoot here in my office at home. Uh, Right now I've got a bunch of my credentials up. So the banner usually covers the credentials. Uh, Right now I've just got the credentials rolling back there. So you have a neat uh, rivals backdrop. How'd you come up with that? Well, actually rivals sent it out because a lot of, our publishers and staff are using this Zoom because it's, it's been a great communication tools uh, with, you know, you know, we, we've had Coach Matt Brown and Ro- Coach Roy Williams, uh, and, and now we're getting some of the, the assistance. So uh, technology-wise, we're, we're, all, we're all growing. Uh, I'm getting better at it. The first time was uh, – <laughs> Matt Brown's, and I think I kind of photobombed uh, when Coach Brown was talking about five or six times. And nothing, kinda, you gotta, nothing you gotta like Dennis Dodd time. with nothing like Dennis Dodd yesterday with uh, Sam Howe. Yeah, uh, yeah. So no, you gotta no one's be, gonna see me laying out in the sun or anything like that. You got to be really careful. So <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a great idea, and and eventually it. it it has probably solved our little podcast problem. The uh, so uh, THI community, you can get ready for a lot of podcasts. Yeah, I mean the problem that we had before was a lot of it was some of the equipment and being able to get everybody on the same page was a little bit of an issue. We we had plenty of podcasts. We had a lot of really good ones. They were fun, but I, I we've been actually talking about doing them like this anyway before Zoom even exploded. So I'm just kind of glad that the off season is here. We're, we're still very, very busy because we've got a lot of stuff going on. Very appreciative of the access that UNC has given us through Zoom. We've had Mac Brown, Brian Hess, strength and conditioning coach. We had offensive coordinator Phil Longo, who's also the quarterback's coach. Yesterday we had Sam Howell and we had Roy Williams. So we've already done, what, four with UNC. we got a couple more coming up in football next week. So Very appreciative of that. It's given us a tremendous amount of content uh, to to, to put out there, but we want to complement that with what we do here. And our podcasts in the past have been very, very popular, and um, the football recruiting ones and the basketball recruiting ones. So we're going to dive into football recruiting here in this one. Basically, the theme that I want to hit on right now is something that Max said when he got hired, and he's said it countless number of times since then, and we even asked Sam Howell about it yesterday, but he said he wants to make Carolina the cool place to be. And, you know, you could ask, what does the cool place to be mean? In a lot of ways, the cool place to be, people probably think, well, it means the fact they've got a new locker room, which is amazing. They've got a a renovated players lounge, which is really cool. They have sleep pods in there. They have uh, a a newly renovated and uh, expanded weight room. They have uh, a football stadium has had a lot of work done on it. They've got our official turf there now or whatever the heck they call that stuff these days. And the kids seem to love that. Uh, The uniforms and some of the changes that they're going to make with that. Uh, the fact that just the vibe around the program, it's fun. But there are a lot of other things aside from just winning games as well and scoring points and getting on TV that makes it a cool place to be. And I think that's one of the neat things that we're seeing uh, come into fruition over the last 15, 16 months since Mac Brown, was, actually almost 17 months since Mac Brown was hired, is the cool place to, meet, to be means a lot of stuff, Dina. And Sam kind of hit on it yesterday. Yeah, 
you know, Carolina, they, they have their iconic brand anyway. You know, you see the color Carolina blue, you know that it's the uh, very unique and very noticeable. Uh, you have Jordan brand, Michael Jordan, all his, all his gear and everything. So that's one of the perks that UNC has being aligned with uh, the Jordan brand and, and everything. And like you, you, you mentioned all the improvements that ha that they've uh, done on campus and, and kids, kids like stuff like that, but you know, it, it was good to see Sam uh, being saying that he's a traditionalist when the idea of, you know, the April Fool's joke about having the Carolina blue turf, you know, Sam said it best. He said, it's, I like to see green, green, the green stuff, the green turf and, and everything. So, you know, it, it's, it's good to see a kid like that, but you know, everybody's different and they, everybody has different tastes. Well, that, that's a good point about the April Fool's joke about the field that the program played, because I think one of the elements about being a cool place to be is that Carolina can be cool when you're not even there yet. So the cool place to be, but if you're not there, it's not B, then you, you, it's cool when you're elsewhere. And social media is an example. I know that Jeremy Sharp, who's the media relations director for football and also in charge of branding for the program, they, they've done so many things to get the program out there, to, 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 to make it hip, if you will, to make it um, something that appeals to a wide range of people, including those kids. I mean, we see comments that recruits are making about stuff like the April Fool's joke. And I think that that's really neat. And what it does is it gets them out there. Uh, they're, they're constantly uh, in social media. They're flying by uh, on Twitter all the time with, with, with things. And I think that that's the kind of thing that, that kids are, are used to. That's how they communicate. That's the world they live in. I remember back when we were young, people used to make jokes about how, well, parents don't know how to do the VCR. I mean, that's how far we've come since then, right? VCR then, now we're talking about this kind of stuff. But it's true because kids live in a different universe than adults do. And adults run these programs. But one of the things about Mac, Mac totally gets it. Mac understands these are the things that kids relate to. This is a way to communicate with them and be the cool place to be when you're not even face to face with them, when they're not on your campus. And I think that that's really neat because we do see a lot of reaction from kids out there. And when we talk to some kids as well, and they give us some of the reasons why they like Carolina, a lot of them just say, you know, it's a, it's a fun place. It's family. They like the connections that are there. And these are little ways that the program is able to connect with these guys, even before they become commitments or become players, by the way that they're handling a lot of social media and otherwise. Yeah, social media is blown up and uh you brought the about jeremy jeremy and everybody in on that staff that helps him this the marketing uh it's been tremendous and you know if they can get roy williams on a on a zoom cast carolina's carolina's doing some good stuff they can get old old roy on there yeah they're doing yeah, they they've really picked it up on the social media side with basketball as well uh, as far as football goes, another thing that Jeremy's doing, uh, and, and this is also Mac as well, and, and Mac has told us multiple times, one of the things he learned in his five years at ESPN was the fact that the media can be a tool. The media can actually help you simply because if you, if Mac Brown wants to talk, we're going to report what he says. If he doesn't want to talk, we're not going to report what he says. Well, guess what? We've had Mac, Brian Hess, Phil Longo, and Sam Howell in the last couple of weeks. And what does that mean? That means content. That means they're staying in the news. We're rolling. I mean, we have so many stories that we've already rolled out and that we we have an admin to roll out that we're working on using down the road. And it's because of the access that they give us. So Carolina's staying in the news. When we put up a story about Sam Howell and how they're going to handle this Heisman campaign, that's stuff that makes the program uh, loud, it makes the program relevant, it makes it current, and it stays in the news. And it's a very, very smart thing to do. It's great for us because we love the content. We're never going to turn away content opportunities. But if you're the program, that's how you use the media, as a vehicle to get stuff out. Because not every kid is going to go to GoHeels.com. 
a lot of them probably don't even go to GoHeels.com unless they want to find out how to get in touch with somebody or whatever. But they are going to see our stuff. They are going to see the other uh, media that covers you and see they're going to see their stuff recycled throughout social media. So the cool place to be is is really far encompassing. It's not just you know the the quick shoot basketball games that they have in the, in the players' lounge. It's not just the um, just the way that they go about things in Chapel Hill. Another thing, too, is staying on social media, Dina. I know that you like this. Uh, Mac lets his coaches be who they are. If you see what, what Javon DeWitt's been doing lately with that, that 90s hip-hop uh, tournament bracket thing on Twitter, or Dre Bly dancing with his daughters, those kinds of things, again, letting them be who they are. You know, the kids are attracted to a school for a lot of reasons, and one of them is the assistant coaches, guys that they can identify with. They're often the guys that they go to when they have an issue instead of going to MAC. It's part of the chain of command, but it's also maybe different relationships you have with a Dre Bly than you might have with the head coach. And when kids see that, they get more comfortable with it. Uh, they enjoy them a lot more, and they get to know them a little bit better. And in any relationship that you have in life, when you get to know a little bit more about somebody, you're usually a little bit more comfortable with them. I think I think that's really cool. We've seen that a lot here in the last month when the only tool that people really had to communicate has been through social media. So a lot of that stuff has kind of blown up even a little bit more. And I've, I've enjoyed it. And we know that through some of the kids we've been talking to that they've seen it and they appreciate it. And I think they get a chuckle out of some of that stuff. Well, and, and you're seeing um, Coach Bateman sitting on the couch with his family talking yeah. about talking about the coronavirus and, and, and what, what you need to do. You see Tommy Thigpen uh, showing his family. And so, uh, you know, it, it comes back to what you said earlier about what a lot of the kids, a lot of the recruits are saying. They feel like Carolina's just one big family, and they're, they're actually showing it through so, show, social media and uh, other avenues. Uh, Matt Brown really cares about his, his players, his current players, his future players, and even the past players. Now, he's got 12 committed kids for the class of 2021. Uh, and they, I believe, we think they're going to probably do about, uh, land about 21 kids. They're going to sign about 21 kids. They're currently ranked number four, I believe, in rivals. They have five four-star kids. They've got six three-star kids. And you believe a couple of the threes are probably going to end up with four which will certainly strengthen their spot. Because one of the reasons why I think their class ranking is so high is because of the volume of commitments that they already have. When some of the other programs that are going to land a lot of four-star caliber kids start getting more commitments, it might be a little tougher for Carolina to maintain that four spot. But with a 21-man class, if they can – get a couple of those threes to move up to four and they could land some of the other fours we've been talking about. Um, they have a chance at kind of finishing, I think in that five to eight ranges, which is what I think is very doable. Who are some of the three stars that you anticipate? I'm not going to say will become four stars, but very likely could become four stars. Well, the first two that pop off my mind, power Eccles, the linebacker out of Vance, um, you know, he, he's, he's been making his name for the last couple of years. Um, one of the best linebackers uh, in the southeast, in the nation, uh, was voted on the defensive player of the year in North Carolina, led Vance to a state championship this past season. So I, I look for Power Eccles to, to move up in the rankings. And also uh, Keyshawn Silver, the big, defensive end out of uh, Rocky Mount, who, uh, you know, he's a dynamic athlete, uh, also a basketball player. So he's got a unique skill set. And we go back to this marketing, and, you know, it's kind of hard to tell school no when they're, they're linking you with one of the best that ever played at Carolina in Julius Pepper. So those two guys um, and um, – you, you never know. You never know with with the rankings and, and everything. Uh, Caleb Hood, who I've 
I've been high on Caleb Hood for a long time. You know that. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's probably the best athlete, pure athlete in the state. Does everything. He, he plays football. He plays basketball. Can play every every skill position on the football field. So, uh, and and who knows? Some of these four stars, you know, they have a, a good good year. I mean, look at Drake May. He he could be a, a possibly a a five star, and it, it's just um, we'll just have to wait and see because uh, this coronavirus has kind of put a damper on the rivals camp where uh, a lot of the analysts get to see these kids in person. Well, and that's the thing. It's been interesting with some of the commitments lately that rivals may have them uh, one star spot lower than some of the other recruiting networks. And and we'll post out there such three stars, such and such commits to UNC. And then a bunch of people come and say four star, four star, or there were, I guess, at a time, an example, where there was a four-star. People said, oh, he's a five-star elsewhere. Uh, I think it's good that every, that not every service just kind of follows one another because there would never be no value of multiple services, for one thing. Everybody's got a different process that they use to come to these determinations. Uh, the thing that I find interesting is that there are some cases in which a kid might be rated lower through rivals but higher uh, somewhere else or in reverse. Rivals has some guys, you and I were talking about it before we started this podcast, that a Carolina uh, player in the class of 2020 is higher rated by Rivals and lower rated by some of the other services. So people tend to think, well, Rivals doesn't know what they're talking about because they're not rating these kids very high. I like the fact that Rivals applies a lot of in-person viewing. They want to see guys in person, either at the camps, they get out and see a lot of games and they use that to, to play a big role in their determinations. And I also like the fact that they don't, and I'm not saying the others do this, but I like the fact that they don't hand out four stars like it's Halloween candy. You gotta earn the four stars. You, another example I gave you before we started this, and I give it to people that are watching, one of the reasons I love the Baseball Hall of Fame, other than the fact that I love baseball, is more selective than the other Hall of Fames. And so I think it means a little more to get in there because there are guys that do not make the Baseball Hall of Fame, that if they had comparable careers in some other sports, they would make those Hall of Fames. So, and I'm not saying that Rivals is like that with respect to the other services, because I don't know enough about the other services, but I do know about Rivals, and that they are maybe a little bit more selective than certainly some people would like, and I think that's okay, because if Power Eccles does get a four-star, it's because he earned a four-star. If and when, and I do think Keyshawn Silver is going to become a four-star, he will be a legitimate four-star. He certainly will have earned it. And by the way, the one time I've been around him in person, when I looked at him, I just assumed he was a four-star and a year or two older. He's a big, impressive kid. Well, that day we did see him was the uh, Showtime camp, and he was standing beside Desmond Evans. And, you know, Desmond – Six six, you know, but Keyshawn Silver standing there right beside of him. He he's like a man child standing beside him. Desmond. Well, we're gonna uh, close this out here in a couple minutes. I really enjoy doing these. We're gonna do a lot more of them, and um, we're gonna get really really creative with these things. We're gonna do a lot more football podcasts than we had been before. Uh, we've got some really cool ideas coming. So if you're a Tar Heel Illustrated follower, either on YouTube, and we're putting these on YouTube or on our site, know that we're going to get a lot more creative with a lot of this stuff, in part because we have to, because Carolina is not casting a very wide net in recruiting. They're far more selective than the previous staff was. And, and I'm, I'm not disparaging the previous staff, but it's just the way they're going about things. Plus, they only got nine spots to fill for 21. So they don't need to have 150 offers out. Mac told us two weeks ago they got like 20 or 30 kids to recruit. And they feel really good about the ones they're going after. Uh, so we don't have a, a different kid to do a write-up on every day now like we did in the previous uh, under the previous regime. So we have to get creative. We're going to use this vehicle here to do a lot of that. And one of the things we're going to hit on in our next podcast, Dean, is something for you to think about, is will they go after another running back? They got Kamaro Edmonds recently. They've got DeAndre Boykins in the class. But if a guy like Will Shipley wants to come as well, and I know that the Drake May factor there is a real one in that, in that recruitment, 
Well, they take going to take three. They got two this in the, in the class of 20. Could they take three and 21? We're going to hit on that in the next video that you and I do. So don't give the answer right now. We're saving it for, for next time because there's, I think that's a fluid situation. A, a lot of the recruitments right now, they're not on hold, but kids can't visit campus. The coaches can't see them in person. So a lot of things are sort of stagnating right now. They're just sort of plateaued and just staying there. Uh, but I think that Shipley's recruitment is one that has a little bit of vitality right now. So we may have some interesting information the next time we do one, regardless of what direction he's going in. To me, information about his recruitment is, is gold, regardless of what, what direction he's headed. Well, I'm ready to go the next time. So All right. For Dina I've King. enjoyed it. Yeah, this has been awesome. I love the backdrop. I'm not going to do one like that. I'm going to tinker around with my backdrops here. I may even put Eddie Murray Orioles stuff back there. People think it's a baseball podcast. Who knows? Uh, I know you guys, are, Clint especially, will get some get some entertainment value out of that. She's Dina King. I'm Andrew Jones. This is TarHillIllustrated.com, and this is Tar Heel Illustrated on YouTube. Appreciate you stopping by. Be a regular visitor if you have not subscribe to our channel do so hit the bell so you get notifications whenever any of our videos go up and if you are on us right now on youtube scroll down and keep scrolling and keep scrolling we've got a ton of stuff for you to enjoy thank you for stopping by